there everybody and welcome back to the Blossom Crochet channel. Firstly, if this is your first time visiting then do just take a moment now to subscribe to the channel so that you can keep up to date with all of my tutorials and things. So this video I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful ultimate rainbow baby blanket. Now obviously it doesn't have to be a baby blanket, you can make it absolutely any size that you like. It's a really simple one row repeat and it's just so bright and so lovely that I've been looking forward to sharing this one with you for a while and I'll also include details on the border which is obviously really simple because I didn't feel like it needed a complicated border because the yarn's already so jazzy so I kept the border really really simple. So you can see it's completely reversible, it's the same on both sides, ignore my ends, I haven't dealt with them yet obviously. So for that blanket that you've just seen I used this Ice Yarns Picasso Rainbow for which I will leave a link in the description. Now for the blanket size that I have done in the one I just showed you, I used six balls of this. So. The pack that you get has eight balls in so you'll still have some left over to make maybe a matching hat or booties or a little cardigan or something but the one that I've made I used six balls of this so just one packet with some left over and obviously I used a little bit of random white that I had in my stash just to make the colours pop in the border. So. I'm not actually going to be starting this for the tutorial, I'm going to use a different yarn purely because I want to keep this in one for another project. So I'll be using a 5mm hook just as I did for the Picasso yarn and obviously we're going to start with our slip knot and our foundation row you can do absolutely any size that you like, you're going to do a multiple of 4 plus 3. So any multiple of four and then once you've done that you'll just add three chains onto the end. For my blanket I did a chain of 92 plus three. So obviously with your chain you just yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through and just complete your foundation chain in a multiple of four plus three. So I'll say again I did 92 plus three for my blanket. Obviously I'm just going to be doing a sample piece with you today. So I've done my multiple of four, so I've got 20 and then I'm going to add an additional three to the end. And we're now going to start working back across in our iris stitch, which is what this blanket is made up of. And into the fifth chain from the hook we're going to work a set of stitches. So this entire blanket, the main body, is done using treble crochets. But please remember that is a treble crochet in UK terms. In the US this is a double crochet. So the whole project is done in the same stitch. So in the fifth chain we're going to go one, two, three, four, and this is our fifth. You'll yarn over, insert into that stitch, yarn over and pull up. And you'll have your three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. You're going to do another treble into that same chain, so yarn over again, back into that same chain, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. You'll then do a chain one, and again back into that same chain space you're going to do two more trebles. So back into that same chain you're going to do one and two trebles. So every stitch set that we do will consist of two trebles, chain one and two trebles all into the same stitch each time. Next you're going to want to skip three chains, so skip one, two, three and into that fourth you're going to do those same stitches again. So you're going to do two trebles, one and two 
chain one and back into that same chain you'll do two more trebles. And then again you'll skip three and work your iris stitch into the fourth and you're just going to complete that all the way along so you two trebles chain one and two trebles in the same stitch and I will meet you as you get towards the end of your row once you have completed your final iris stitches and once you get to the end of your row you should have two stitches left after you've done your final iris stitch and into your last chain you're going to just put one treble crochet or remember double if you're in the US and that is how your first row should be looking where your foundation row so now you're going to turn your work and we're going to work back along and you want to insert your hook into that very first stitch go through the whole of the stitch yarn over and pull up and yarn over pull through both and then you'll see this stitch here has two vertical parts to it you're going to go behind the one closest to your hand, your working end yarn over and pull up again you'll have two loops yarn over pull through both and that just gives us a treble height stitch but without doing a chain which means that you get a thicker, more, more full stitch so you don't get great big gaps. And now very simply you're going to be working into the chain one spaces in between your trebles all the way along. So into your first chain one space you're going to skip over the top of the two trebles. You're going to do your iris stitch so you're going to do your two trebles into that chain one space, chain one and then back into that space you'll do your other part of your stitch so your other two trebles and then again skip across to your next chain one so you'll be skipping these trebles and these trebles and working in that chain one space and you'll do your next iris stitch chain one and the other half into that space two and you'll work that all the way along so work your new iris stitch into the chain one of the iris stitch from the foundation row and I will meet you at the end in just a moment so as you get towards the end of that row you'll do your final iris stitch into the chain one of that last iris stitch from the last row and then you'll skip the two trebles at the end of the row and you're working into the top of this chain that we skipped from the beginning of the foundation chain so skip your two trebles and put your final treble into the next stitch along like so and that is your second row completed. So again then you're just going to continue that one row repeat so you'll turn, you'll work your treble height little fat stitch <laughs> and then you will continue working your iris stitches into the chain one from the row below and then I will just show you the row end on this one just because it's slightly different because you're not going to be working into the foundation chain so I will meet you there in just a tick. So once you get to the end of this row you'll complete your final iris stitch and then again you will be skipping the two trebles but obviously we're not going to be working into the foundation chain like on the last row you'll be working into the top of that starting stitch that we did so you'll skip the two trebles and into the next stitch along again go through the whole of the stitch 
and work your final treble. So you'll repeat that row now over and over again until your project is as big as you want it to be. However, for the Picasso blanket that I showed you at the beginning here, I did a total of 66 rows and then I started to straighten off my top edge. So as I say, you can complete your blanket to however big you wanted. I did 66 rows for this one. And I'm going to work up a couple more rows on this sample piece now so that I can show you how to square off at the top because obviously it's it's all wavy at the moment. So I will meet you once you're ready to start straightening off. When it comes to changing colour, if you're not sure about that, then I will leave a link to a slow tutorial in the description. But I just did it that on my last stitch of the row when I knew that I would be running out of yarn or I wanted to attach a new colour for example I would just stop with my final treble with two loops on my hook and then I would grab my new yarn and pull it through this final two loops and continue on as normal. So I've just done a couple more rows you can see it looks really beautiful just in a single colour as well I mean this has got a very slight um, variation on it but you can see it would make beautiful stitch for scarves as well. So once you're ready to complete and straighten off your top edge you want to turn your work, go through the top of that first stitch as normal, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through both and then you'll stop there you're not going to do your treble height stitch this time, chain two and then you're going to slip stitch into the chain one space so yarn over and pull through both chain two and then into the space in between your iris stitches you're going to put a UK double or US single so yarn over and pull up yarn over and pull through both chain two slip stitch into your chain one space chain two and double into the space between your iris stitches and continue that all the way along until you get towards the other end and then finally you'll chain two and then into the top of that final stitch of the row you will just put a UK double. And that there just straightens off that top edge a little bit for our ready for our border. So if I just bring this one back for a second you can see that that's exactly what I did on this one. I did my chains and then my stitches in between and then it just gives you a really nice straight edge ready for the border. Now I could have gone straight off and started my border in the white but I used actually the Picasso for the first round of the border because we're going to be going into the edges of stitches and things I didn't want it to be really obvious straight away with the white I wanted to have that perfect straight edge first before I started doing my white part of the border so I just thought it would give a bit of a cleaner finish. So I will very quickly show you how I started the border and I will continue with the yarn that I have already and it is a literal round of UK doubles, US singles all the way around with chain twos in the corner so really really simple. So I'm going to turn my work again and into this first stitch I'm going to do a double crochet and then I will finish off this part of my corner when I get back and then this top edge which is what you should be working along you'll just do double crochets along so I'm going to do two double crochets, that chain two, 
I'm going to skip the slip stitch, I'm not going to work a stitch into there. I'm going to go and do two stitches under the next chain two and two stitches under the next. So I'm not actually working into the tops of any of the proper stitches, the slip stitches or the doubles that we did. I'm just going to be putting two double crochets into the chain two spaces. I found that personally that is just what worked best for me. And then when you get to your final chain two space you'll do your two stitches and then into that final UK double of the round I'm going to put a double, chain two, turn it a little bit and into that same stitch I'll put another double crochet. And you might want to mark the chain two space if you wish so that you know where that your corner is going to be each time. And then you're just going to work down the side and just space out your stitches as evenly as possible. What I like to do is go into the start. You can see you've got some quite obvious holes. You've got one there, one there and one there. So I'll work into each one of those and I'll also work one into the larger gaps as well. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'll go into this first one here and then through the big gap I'll do another through the top of this next one I'll do another one and then again into the big gap in through the side of the stitch and through the bigger gap so I'll work that all the way round now and remember in your corners you will do one double crochet oops, chain two and another double crochet so I'll meet you back around when you get to where we started from and we'll finish off this round. So back around where we started and if you remember we did our first double crochet just here and we need to finish off this corner so in that same stitch you'll do your double chain two and then I'm going to slip stitch to the start of the round. And now it's up to you, you can stay with the same colour or you can change to whatever colour you wanted and you're just going to work, there's, no, there's not really much point in showing you how to work rounds and rounds of double crochets because you've just done one and you'll basically do the same thing again but if you were doing the contrasting colour then obviously you'll just work one double crochet into the top of each double crochet all around and into your chain two space you'll do one double chain two and one double all in the same space and I worked three rounds of white double crochets after I'd done my first round with my Picasso and then I worked one final round of double crochet but using the Picasso just to give it that lovely colourful, colourful finish. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you will have been able to follow along and make your own beautiful Picasso rainbow blanket. As I say, you can use any yarn that you wish, but I used the Picasso rainbow and I'm really happy with how this one has turned out and I hope you will be too. Remember to like and subscribe and I will see you again for another tutorial really soon. Bye for now.